Now, research shows that worldwide, women and girls are the largest group of people who are poor and therefore more susceptible to abuse and diseases such as HIV and AIDS. Well, who better to help turn the tide for women than their counterparts in political positions? This was the idea behind a recent meeting of female politicians here in Washington. Sub-Saharan Africa has made strides in fighting HIV AIDS. The United Nations recently noted a 25% decline in HIV infections in 22 of the worst hit countries, largely due to more awareness and better preventive measures. But new infections are still occurring, affecting mostly women and girls who, due to poverty, advocates say, are still at risk. Tokozani Kupe is the Deputy Prime Minister of Zimbabwe, one of the countries recognized for its dramatic drop in HIV infections. When we talk about HIV and AIDS, we are supposed to talk about it within the context of poverty. Because as long as if your countries are poverty stricken, it doesn't matter whether you give your people ARVs. If they don't have food, they will end up dying because those ARVs will end up doing more harm than good. Kupe is one of several African ministers and parliamentarians from 12 African nations invited to Washington for the Global Power Africa Conference. Global Power was started by the Center for Women Policy Studies to promote the lives of women through public policy. The center's president, Leslie Wolf, says it is working with UNAIDS this year to help implement strategies to improve the well-being of women and girls by 2014. The secret of Global Power, as we created it, is that it's a very intensive program for a small group of members of parliament. They have the power to make change. They have the knowledge and the expertise, and they have the constituents who will listen to them. The women leaders applaud the program, saying by coming together, they can help draft laws and implement social programs that can empower women so they are not driven to prostitution or raped and abused. Beatrice Rochimari is an MP from Uganda, hailed for bringing HIV prevalence rates down to single-digit levels, but she says she fears a resurgence of AIDS. When I talk to my constituency, many, many people still don't know much about the disease, and maybe partly because of that assumption at the national level that actually people know everything about the disease. The, our national programs and interventions are kind of uh, uh, relaxed. Ruachi Mari and others say they're seeing a rise of HIV infections in previously untargeted groups, intravenous drug users, men having sex with men, and married women or those in long-term relationships. Nigerian MP Benny Lar. The men are in denial. Nigerian men, unfortunately, uh, have this egotistic belief that they're men and they can do what they want. They can have as many mistresses as they want and not have to face the consequence. But guess what? You do. We should have to think of empowering women so that they can have a power to make a dialogue on issues concerning with the HIV AIDS within their families, within their community, and wherever they are. African leaders and officials have stepped up AIDS funding and legislation, with some even publicly taking HIV tests to help kill stigma. But the women here say more can be done. Henrietta Bogopane Zulu, an MP from South Africa, acknowledges her country's high prevalence rates for HIV. We are looking at testing 15 million South Africans by June 2011. We have more than a million South Africans on ARVs. In terms of mother to child, we have reached 80% of uh, pregnant women are on ARVs, that those, those who need it. Uh, we're looking at uh, reaching 50% of eradicating new infections by June 2011. Tanzanian MP Lediana Mafuru Mgongo says men, often cited as culprits in the rising HIV infection rates, should also be included in discussions. We need to involve boys and men at the community level and also scale programs which can reach all communities. The parliamentarians and ministers at this Global Power Africa event say they plan to use their political might to influence real change for women and girls in Africa, and they hope that their next meeting will be in one of their countries.